We all know there is a multitude of false doctrines for any one of us to latch onto these days. This recently hit home as we were forced to take a deep look into the Essen Humane Gospel of Jesus Christ. There are five main parts to this gospel. To best describe it, it is written in a similar format as the New Testament, basically, a gospel in and of itself. Many stories are even based off those we see within the New Testament. However, each is its own uniquely twisted version that completely differs from the one true gospel, making it its very own distinct, deceptive gospel of the life of Jesus Christ. This gospel gets its name from being centered on the meaning of the word humane. The definition of humane is characterized by tenderness, compassion, and sympathy for people and animals, especially for the suffering or distressed, acting in a manner that causes the least harm to people or animals. According to the humane gospel, the word humane describes man at his very best, man who not only knows God's laws, but lives by the daily, for humaneness is a virtue that results from the understanding of the spiritual fruits of the Holy Spirit. It farther states, only the Essene writings contain the complete story of the most kind and generous of all men. The Essenes led a completely ascetic lifestyle. They acknowledged Moses and believed that Moses did in fact receive the laws. The Essenes were Jews who kept all Jewish observances. However, they did not offer sacrifices, eat meat, or make sacrifices with it. The humane gospel would have people believe that Jesus and his disciples were vegetarians and did not eat meat. It also teaches that Jesus did not feed the five thousand with fish and loaves, but with leaves and grapes. It quotes Jesus as saying that those who eat meat are not worthy of life in this world, nor in the world to come. It goes on to say, let such forever be forgotten of God, for by no means will such enter the kingdom of light, but will remain in darkness due to their blood guilt. Within this entire gospel, it brings a greater emphasis to animals than to human life. There are stories not even remotely based from the true word of God where Jesus saves creatures. You will see below how they call animals holy. Those who follow this gospel are known to believe that all animals have a soul, and no one is to kill or eat animals for this reason, if so, the person who does is in sin. Not only does it consider eating meat sin, but look how it has Jesus condemning meat eaters to hell. According to the above quotes, it explicitly states that all who eat meat are not worthy of salvation, to be forgotten by God, and by no means enter heaven but remain in darkness. It may not directly use the term hell, but where else would be spent in darkness, never entering heaven. Another point worthy of mention is how this false gospel condemns fishermen. Of a fisherman it states, a thief he is, he stealeth the treasures of the deep and disrupts the holy life of the blessed. It compares the fisherman to Satan himself, and see creatures such as fish, become the food of death. Therefore, eating fish is greatly condemned as well as those making a living as fishermen. There is something else I found highly disturbing. Repeatedly, I took note that Jesus did not refer to the Father simply as Father. On numerous occasions, Jesus refers to the Father as the Father Mother in heaven. This gospel is pure heresy my friends. The word heresy means it holds beliefs or opinions contrary to Christian doctrine, especially the one true gospel of Christ. Remember, I have only but scratched the surface of all this doctrine teaches and presents as truth. All the commands were given to Moses on the mount, which is also well known in the Torah. Abstaining from meat because an animal has a soul is clearly not in the law of God. Moving on to the New Testament, Jesus was Jewish to the bone. Jews were meat eaters, and Jesus was no exception. Having been flawless all his days, Jesus observed all that was commanded by God through Moses. He was therefore free to eat clean animals including sheep, goat, cattle, fish, and some fowl. As commanded of God, he abstained from meat deemed unclean. One of the strongest areas in scripture that smashes the humane gospel's doctrine of a vegetarian Jesus is the undisputable fact that he yearly partook in Passover. The specific guidelines of meat preparation for the Passover meal can be found in Exodus 12. 
In Luke 2 colon 41 42, every year his parents traveled to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. Here it tells the story about their trip to celebrate this feast when Jesus was 12 years old. As a strict Jew, Jesus observed the feasts as taught by his earthly parents. Common knowledge tells us he ate of the Passover meal, which included lamb or a baby goat. As a small side note, recall how the Essens did not offer meat sacrifices as the law required. Yet, in the word Jesus is referred to as the lamb, slain for the sins of the world and his blood shed is the ultimate sacrifice. In 1 Corinthians 5-7, it even specifically refers to Christ as our Passover, sacrificed for us. My point is how this, Jesus' death as the Lamb, is symbolic of the laws of sacrifice given to Moses. His death and shedding of his blood was the final fulfillment of the law. God himself had no problem with meat sacrifices and the eating of meat, as read in the scriptures above. All the dietary laws were in effect up to the time of the New Covenant. The works of the law no longer apply to Christians because we are now under grace after that ultimate sacrifice of Jesus, the Lamb, slain for us on the cross. His sacrifice was the final sacrifice. Another false doctrine of the humane gospel is their belief that because fish is meat, it is strictly off limits and not to be consumed. They believe that Jesus never ate it. The most solid account of Jesus eating fish occurs after his resurrection. This is recorded in John 21 when he showed himself to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. The disciples went fishing at night and caught nothing. When morning came, Jesus stood on the shore and said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it, in, for the multitude of fishes. As soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. Jesus then cometh, and taketh bread, and giveth them, and fish likewise. John 21. What more does one need in order to see that Jesus set fish and even referred to it as meat in the above passage? This is not some symbolic story within the word. It is literal, and to be taken as such. One either believes the word as a whole, or does not. There is no guessing as to what Jesus meant in the above account. The humane gospel also states that Jesus did not multiply fish and loaves for the five thousand. Rather, this erratic doctrine suggests that he multiplied leaves and grape clusters. The true story of Jesus feeding the 5,000 can be read in Matthew 14, where it clearly says he multiplied five loaves and two fish. Would Jesus do such a great act for such a magnitude of people if he himself were against eating meat and never ate it himself? The number of people he fed did not even include the women and children so one can only speculate the true number of all he fed that day. Next, I want to talk some about this false gospel's statements of the fishermen and comparing them to Satan himself. I gave quotes directly taken from this gospel in which fishermen are called thieves and disrupt the holy life of the blessed. What then does this suggest of the Messiah? The Sea of Galilee offered a livelihood for many generations. At least seven of the twelve disciples were fishermen. Unlike this heretical gospel suggests, it would be hard to believe that Jesus would call any to walk beside him as his friend and brother throughout his time on earth had he not found the vocation of a fisherman to be respectable and pleasing to him. To name a few, Andrew was tending to his nets when Jesus called him as a disciple, Luke 5-2. His brother Peter watched Jesus climb into his boat then preach to the people. James and his brother John were mending nets when Jesus called them. It is near lunacy to think that Jesus would call so many fishermen as part of the twelve, yet according to the humane gospel beliefs, it is compared to Satan. There is so much more within the Bible I could share with you to prove the heresies of this false humane gospel. I feel I have highlighted some of its main doctrines and beliefs, and pray I have given you a better understanding of it. 
I am fully convinced that this is nothing more than a doctrine of devils. I pray as Paul did for all those who hear this work in its entirety. My hope is that the truth of the gospel might continue with you, knowing there is but one true gospel. May you hide his word in your heart, and never be deceived with another gospel.